This is a storyline. This is a different type of concept. I grew up as a child in the early 70s, if you will, and into the 80s, listening to a company who had records called Let's Pretend. So let's just pretend for a moment that you are born and your body doesn't actually match your mind, your heart, and your soul. There's a struggle that goes on, is my understanding, for a very good portion of elementary school and junior high. But children are sort of marvelous in that your friends and your girlfriends kind of know that you're a boy, and then you literally do okay with that because they love you for that and they don't hate you for that, especially in elementary school. They want to cuddle, they want to hold hands, they want to snuggle with you, and they feel really marvelous to you because you're that boy. But openly when you get to junior high, then people start to label, they start to lie, and you explore your individuality, you explore probably a little bit of sexuality, but eventually you figure out what you are because the world offers information and education. And then they give you labels that don't really fit once you've decided what to do. What I'm talking about today is a really rather sensitive topic. What I'm talking about is a birth defect that involves the genitalia, where the heart, mind, and soul of a human being gifted by God is not matching what has been produced out through a human womb or birth canal. That predilection is called transgenderism or gender dysphoria. It is not exactly transsexualism, but it is close to that. It is most definitely not transveticism, which I probably am not even saying or pronouncing correctly, where someone just likes to dress up in the opposite sex clothes. That is a totally different condition. Most people are sort of becoming aware of that. But here's what we have in an immoral society when I talk about this storyline, is we have people, we have police officers, we have immoral people that will take someone who has this condition and has figured out with specialists, true specialists in the world, how to solve that problem, how to fix the issue. And those lying bastards of people of Satan will literally drug someone and shave them up and try to ruin their life. Try to keep them from being having to have any success in life. And if they had some success, they want to literally starve them to death. They want to take their vehicles from them that are fully paid for. They want to make sure they don't have a place to live. And they literally want to abuse them. Most people aren't like that. But there are groups of people that like to do that. And openly, it's not right. There are family members that will say they accept the person for a long time. And then if something goes wrong, if there's a loss of a friendship or a partnership or a wife or spouse of a person who is called trans today, that openly then those family members will go after them, hit them, lie about them, steal their records, steal their property, and try to blackmail them into doing things that they want for their life. There's also people that never get out of a condition which is nowhere near what that condition is. And openly, they might be a masculine female, but they're not actually gay, which is not true. We have a lot of tomboys that aren't gay, but the truth is the true butch lesbians of the world don't like trans people because they feel that they're betraying some community service project that they want to do with them. Now, when I talk about the storyline, I want you to know that you can turn me off at any time. When I talk about the storyline, I'm sort of being a little facetious because I don't like to constantly be reminded of someone's genitalia or lack thereof or have a curiosity about that. You see, when someone is labeled trans, what the implication is that my genitalia does not match my personhood. But here's what I think. Here's what I feel as a person of the world. Here's what I know about people, that if I'm confused about what you are because of how you choose your fashion, I might gently and respectfully ask you, what pronouns should I use, if I can't tell by when you tell me your name. But if you're lying to yourself about what you are and you don't change your name to match what your soul is, that's on you. But here's what I also feel. People are very clear most of the time on how they present. But just because you put on a tie and put on a suit, it doesn't make you a man. 
just because you do that, it doesn't make you anything that a man is going to regard either. There are men in the world who have what we like to call small packages. Those small packages, and you know what I'm talking about, and I'm trying to be a little PG-13, work just fine sexually for them when it's time. But they're not going to be standing up for a total stranger who's inspecting their body without lawful consent and actually committing sexual assault on them. They're not going to move into a way of per 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 protruding from their body because of someone's curiosity to see them. When I made a video a while ago, and it was quite some time ago, talking about this topic, I tried to be as stupid as possible. When I made a video about something that's a condition of mine, people just wanted to video nothing. They wanted to ruin my life. And openly, it was sort of hard for me to talk about. There are people in politics that really want me to talk about fortuitism or um, gynomastia and things like that, and I'm not an expert on those things. But we have all kinds of people in the world. We have all kinds of birth defects in the world. We have all kinds of conditions in the world. But here's what I really think. What I really think in this awkward video of me trying to create a storyline is that how the person presents and dresses defines how we should handle them. If there is a person that is sort of masculine physically but really works at presenting themselves as a girl, I'm going to accept that because the truth is there are some masculine women out there that I didn't realize what they were without really inspecting their name, without really listening carefully to other people address them, and openly I will gently ask someone sometimes if I need to change what I've said to them. I might call a young man who's younger than me, much younger than me, son who's trying to play with me a little bit. But if it turns out that they're actually a girl, I'd be sort of embarrassed by that. You see, we have the right to ask when we're confused, and then we have the right to apply what we hear as the answer without being bemused and without being abusive. So I guess what I'm saying is how the person presents is how we should be responding. But what pisses me off to no end was when I saw a photograph with Nancy Pelosi of a man with a full fucking beard in a dress. And I thought, you know, this is a political position. This is a not a political movement for you personally to shit all over everyone who has to see you. If you wanted to wear something that was sort of like that, you could have picked a kilt. You could have picked up something that gave you your feminine feelings without making people go, I don't even know what the fuck to call you. And I don't mean to be rude, because I know there's people who are two spirits, and we learn about that when you study Native Indians that native Indians that live in indigenous spaces really allow the spirit to be the spirit. And they really allow that because they believe in a God that creates that. It is only Christians that burden people with trying to press on people's private parts. And that pisses me off. You don't have the right to see my private parts unless I want to share my love with you, my life with you. But you fucking immoral people think that running around calling people beautiful women, absolutely stunningly beautiful women, and I can say that because they put themselves together. She could be a 400-pound girl, but if she's putting herself together with proper clothing and really looks great, I'm going to tell her she looks great. I'm not saying I want to date the girl, but she really looks great. But I'm not going to insult her and call her something she's not. And I guess that's the point, because we don't walk into rooms and expose our genitalia. So this word trans sort of pisses me off. If the person's in preoperative status, that's one thing, but most of the country's states do not require someone to chop shit off or modify themselves medically without proper physicians. And here's the problem. There aren't that many gifted surgeons out there to do those things. People I know who I really care for have got serious ass scars on their body. They took things off and that was their choice. But we don't have to do that today because we don't expose our naked bodies to people. We are not a nudist colony of America.